Добоширна. Окей. Okay, uh, here we go again. Now uh, Ivan will share the screen. Great. Uh, so um, sorry guys uh, for all the technical issues that uh, we have had uh, so far. Uh, we hope that uh, this stream uh, will be okay. Uh, and uh, Let's uh, start uh, finally discussing uh, the Rui Lopez uh, with uh, Grandmaster uh, Ivan Ceparinov. Uh, so uh, before uh, everything, uh, I want uh, to say that uh, Grandmaster Ceparinov uh, has uh, published uh, two uh, excellent Rui Lopez databases uh, for modern chess. And uh, now uh, we will try to gain some uh, deeper understanding of the main lines uh, in Rui Lopez. Uh, so, uh, welcome, Ivan. And uh, uh, first of all, let me ask you uh, why uh, you have uh, chosen uh, the Rui Lopez uh, to be uh, the subject of your uh, databases. Hello, hello, everybody. Uh, uh, thank you for um, entering this stream. So, uh, yeah, Rui Lopez is one of the most uh, popular um, openings uh, in chess. And after e4, uh, e5 is like the most popular move. I think uh, many strong players lately are playing this uh, opening. And definitely, I think uh, to understand uh, chess in general, you need to understand how to play Rui Lopez. This is one of the general pawn structures uh, that we have in chess. So I decided to give my um, knowledge and my uh, understanding of this uh, line because I'm playing also for white, for black pieces. Uh, so I think uh, I had uh, what to say in this line. So that's why I decided to to make these databases. And um, and now we will see some more details in these uh, lines. Very well. Uh, so uh, let's uh, start uh, by examining uh, some of uh, the lines. So this is uh, on, on the board. We see the main position of uh, the Rui Lopez. Uh, and here uh, in the database, uh, uh, instead of uh, the main line, which is uh, also most popular, uh, rookie one, uh, you suggest uh, D3. Uh, uh, okay, when I say that uh, rookie one is the most popular move, I'm, I don't know if I'm uh, correct because nowadays probably D3 is uh, getting even more popular, but uh, why uh, you have uh, decided uh, to go for a D3 instead of rookie one? Yeah, of course, rookie one is the most popular. I mean, always there are many, many games. Uh, but I want to explain what, what is the difference and why I decided to go D3 and why in general we are playing D3. Because, of course, more, more logical is to go rookie one. And then the idea usually is to go later with C3 and D4. This is the main plan. So let's say after B5, bishop B3, black plays D6. This is the main theory. C3, castle H3. And here black has uh, plenty of different uh, options. There are many variations, like Briar is knight b8, bishop b7 is Zaitsev variation, I think h6 is Mislov, you have also Chigore knight a5, and many others. So, um, so uh, oh, let, let, let the uh, screen be visible. Okay. Yeah, sorry about that. So, uh, and here after bishop b3, of course, the main, uh, lately, the main theory is uh, what actually disturbs me when I play with white in Rui Wopes is the martial variation, which is uh, going by short castle here. The point is after c3, black wants to meet with d5. And here, after rookie one castle, um, the usual, the most popular lines are a4, a4, before we'll see actually this position also here, but with a little bit uh, differences, the rook will be on f1. And uh, the difference is that here we already committed to the rook on e1 and uh, this is giving a sort of uh, tempi for black. Uh, and also here after castle h3, bishop b7, d3 is also a big line. Uh, the, the, mo the, the whole point of playing d3 immediately instead of rook e1 is that in this position, for example, after castle, let's say, for b4, now the rook is still on f1, so we can uh, play immediately a5, and then we can bring the knight to c4 immediately. Uh, with the rook on e1, uh, it's not the same because black is playing very fast bishop e6. And this is very big theory. It's very difficult to, to understand just uh, by saying these things. But uh, in general, the idea is that we want to postpone rook e1 and to make some useful moves and then to play rook e1. 
and yeah. also uh, we are just escaping this uh, Marshall variation. So basically, D3 is uh, against Marshall. It's not against uh, B5, Bishop B3, B6. It's just against uh, the Marshall variation. This is the whole point. And in any case, when we know that our opponent is playing Marshall, then uh, already we uh, we can play with D3. Of course, if we expect the other lines, then I think Rook E1 makes sense. But if we expect anyway Marshall, I think D3 is make uh, make more sense. Okay, so, so this is the basic idea of uh, the difference between Rook E1 and D3. So you you propose D3 in your database. Yes. And after B5, Bishop B3, uh, I I think that uh, it's uh, better uh, to start uh, with uh, the main line uh, with uh, D6 uh, here. Yeah, D6 is the main move. Uh, castle also makes sense, but uh, D6 is uh, the main move. So basically here the idea is uh, that Black wants to take our bishop by playing knight a5 next. And uh, I mean, I cannot say always, but almost always, uh, if Black has changed this uh, bishop with uh, the knight from c6, it's very good for Black, uh, almost always. So uh, it's not a good idea to give up this uh, bishop. So that's why normally the theory goes a3 or a4, quite simply is giving some space to our bishop. Another very big line actually we saw recently in uh, the match uh, Jan Nepomniaschi against Tim Kliren, the move c3. Uh, actually myself, I also played this move um, very recently, I think like a couple of months ago, I played against uh, Pentawa Hare Krishna. So c3, it's another way to play. It's, um, a little bit slow, slower way, but uh, it's also possible. And uh, here the main theory goes castle, h3. So for example, here what Dean Clearen did, he played bishop b7, which is one of the moves. Uh, I don't think it's, uh, in my opinion, it's not the best one, but it's uh, one of the decent moves. Another big line here is already to go for Chigorin type of positions by knight a5, bishop c2, c5. This is the main theory here. And the move that I suggest after d6 is bishop d2. Uh, I want to explain why I decided to suggest finally this move uh, instead of the move a3, which is the most popular in this position. They're very similar, but the idea of bishop d2 is that for now we want to, first of all, we are preventing knight a5, obviously, but also we want to um, play a4 or a3, depends on the situation. So we are keeping the option to play a4 or a3, or even sometimes c3. Simply, we don't want to commit yet. We want to see how black will uh, react. And for now, we are preventing uh, knight a5, which is very important. And also, I like the bishop d2 more because it's very rare compared to a3. For example, a3, the theory is uh, very, very big here. And uh, the usual theory is castle knight c3. Here, black has many, many moves. Uh, but also, after a3, uh, what I play for black, actually, I have a couple of games is the most knight a5 immediately, and then black is going to play this, uh, I call it a Chigorin type of uh, yes. structure. I don't know if it's correct, but this is my way to, to know this position. So uh, this is the main uh, theory nowadays, and it goes like knight 3 bishp6. There are a lot of games of top level guys. For example, Magnus Carlsen also plays like this with black. So uh, that's why with bishop d2, we simply want to um, a little bit um, uh, disturb our opponent in sense that uh, it's not so theoretical and still it's very flexible way to play. We keep all options uh, with white. So this is the main reason I chose uh, Bishop to move here. Yeah. I see. And uh, if um, if uh, somebody uh, wants uh, to play this uh, Bishop D D2 system, uh, uh, the knowledge of uh, so many forced variations is not uh, that important. Uh, as far as uh, I understand, and uh, you, one should mainly focus uh, on the positional subtleties uh, in the variation. Yes, of course, uh, the whole variation is not so, um, uh, not so. I mean, forced, but still we need to know some ideas. We need to know how to play. There are some forcing lines, of course, but it's not like um, Nidor, for example, where everything, you know, it's uh, depending on one move. Here it's not the case. But still, it's very important to know our ideas and our plans. And uh, Bishop D2, uh, in this type of positions, uh, it's very typical move. For example, I just want to, to show one line, let's say A3, castle, knight C3, bishop B7. And here, 
Also, the theory goes like uh, Bishop d2 many times, and after let's say queen d7, knight d5, this is very typical position. So normally the bishop on d2 is very well placed. It's not like um, unusual way. So that's why bishop d2 makes a lot of sense. Uh, of course, now it's a little bit awkward because we didn't play knight c3 yet, but uh, eventually we'll play it, and the bishop on d2 is uh, very well placed normally. Okay, so uh, how? Um... What are the most uh, popular? Yes, uh, so black has uh, different options. I think uh, castle is the most uh, normal way, probably. But uh, because we played bishop d2, I think the main move also is bishop g4. It's one of the main moves, let's say. The idea is that he wants immediately to play knight d4. And now we have some uh, immediate problems uh, because we cannot play h3 immediately. Uh, because probably the idea is that black can simply take, exchange everything, and uh, the position is very simple. Uh, it should be more or less fine for a black because he exchanged a lot of pieces and um, I think black is fine. Oh, and basically okay. after bishop g4, we must go c3. This is the main the main position that we'll see. And uh, here the difference is uh, for black, uh, it's not so great. Uh, the point that he has the bishop already committed to g4 and eventually after, let's say, castle h3, if he goes to h5, uh, in general in Spanish, uh, in Rui Lopez, uh, in this type of positions, the bishop doesn't belong to h5. Uh, and even though we are losing some tempis that we will see later in these uh, lines, that uh, we are losing some tempis, we are moving this bishop from d2, and then we place the knight on d2. But uh, in general, this bishop on h5 is very uh, awkwardly placed, and after some g4 is coming, the bishop should go to g6, and it's not very well placed there. So this is the main difference. He's provoking c3 and he's provoking that we have we have to lose some tempos. But the bishop on h5 is also not great. So there are some pluses, but there are some minus, minuses also about bishop g4. Uh, but first, maybe let's start with some other moves. Here, black has uh, plenty of options. I think uh, to play, for example, bishop b7 immediately, it's a little bit uh, too early to commit the bishop to b7. It's better just to castle first. Uh, because I don't see the point uh, to place immediately the bishop on b7, because many times uh, actually this bishop is not um, well placed there. It's better to be uh, placed on e6 to try to exchange the bishops or just to, to be kept on this diagonal. So uh, bishop b7 is not uh, obvious that it's so great. And I think immediately after bishop b7, we already can go with a4. This is the idea, castle. And uh, here, for example, uh, this is one of the ideas uh, that we played bishop d2 and a4. So now, because he played bishop b7, in this type of positions, I want to say that, for example, Magnus Carlsen, he's doing many times this. He doesn't play bishop b7 so fast because he wants to play rook b8 many times to protect this pawn on b5. This is very important. And now after castle, we have this uh, 93 idea to try to disturb black's uh, pawn on b5. And he has not a very good way to protect it because after knight a3, uh, he cannot really uh, do b4 because we will go knight c4. And this looks very great. We want to go a5, maybe c3 next. It looks like black is uh, not so great here. And uh, this is the point of uh, playing bishop b7 so early. Maybe it's not so great. Uh, so that's why I think uh, more logical is maybe to go with uh, short castle or bishop g4. Another move that I want to mention is not played uh, uh, often here, but it's not uh, so bad. It's probably the move bishop e6 immediately. Yeah, that's what uh, I was uh, going to ask uh, because uh, I think that uh, it's uh, really very important uh, for our viewers uh, to understand uh, all these positions with uh, double pawns on uh, e6 and e5 and how to handle them. Yeah, this is um, uh, usually very uh, critical um, decision, uh, not only in Spanish, but also in Italian, in uh, all these type of positions, this structure. Uh, to play bishop b6 or not to play. From black point of view, it's not so simple. Many times uh, it's not so great. Uh, sometimes it's good, depends on the situation. Here, for example, it's definitely good for black. We cannot take immediately because uh, our pieces, you see, are very awkward. This bishop now on d2 doesn't make any sense. And uh, I mean, we need to play bishop e3 maybe sooner or later. And then the f5 is also open. I think here black is doing uh, doing okay. 
So that's why here after Bish visits in this moment, I think we need to continue with our plan playing knight c3. And I mentioned that if black plays knight a5 and takes this bishop, this is good for black. But uh, exchanging the bishops uh, for e6 to b3, like bishop takes b3, is not the same. I think this is different because this knight on c6 is not so great. Uh, he doesn't have a pair of bishops now, so I think this makes uh, some sense for white. Our rook is very well placed now on the a-file. Uh, this pawn is hanging all the time on e6. And the white has simple plans in this position. Normally, uh, white is playing something like knight e2, knight g3, eventually something c3, d4, or b4 maybe to fix the pawns. Depends on the situation. So this is in general a possible position, but I think white is uh, slightly better. And another option here is after knight c3, he lost castle. This is very typical. Already we go knight d5. And this is very good for white because we are covering the square. He cannot go knight a5. This is the point of bishop on d2. And he cannot really take on d5. He cannot take with a knight, obviously, because he's losing a piece. And if he takes with the bishop and uh, playing knight b8, this is also not great because we have a pair of bishops. We can go maybe a4, opening this a file. And definitely black uh, is worse because we have a pair of bishops and um, uh, it's not so great for black simply. So and, if we can yeah, summarize, so, uh, after bishop e6, knight d5, uh, can we get back uh, to this position? Uh, yes. For, yeah. uh, actually, this uh, construction with uh, bishop b3 and knight d5 uh, is, uh, is very advantageous uh, for white. And uh, here uh, black is um, under a lot of uh, pressure. Yes, I just want to mention something that uh, this type of position many times we have with uh, the move uh, with the pawn on c5 already instead of c7. Yes. And this is actually a different story with the pawn on c5. That's why many times black is playing, let's say, uh, in this line a3, black is playing knight a5, c5. This is main theory, something like this, for example, here. And then uh, eventually black is going knight c6 back, white is going knight d5. This is different story because the pawn on c5 is much better simply. And in this uh, line that we were seeing here, uh, black species are very passive. He can play c5. Also, many times if he moves this knight from c6, then we'll have uh, maybe d4 eventually. So uh, I think uh, this is the main difference. And now this construction, you are right, that is very, very nice for uh, for white. Uh, okay. And um, probably uh, some of our viewers um, might ask uh, how... Uh... How white? Uh, what is white's next move in this position? Because okay, we have played uh, knight c3, knight d5. Mm -hmm. The position uh, looks very good, but how should uh, white proceed from here? Uh, yes, the main point I think is that uh, not what white will play, but uh, actually is that black doesn't have clear plan. Mm -hmm. And our plan is very simple. We can play many useful moves like uh, rook q1 next. We can go h3. We can play with c4 even sometimes. It's very popular in these structures. Or we can go a4. We have very simple moves like rook e1, h3, a4, and white will be still better. Black doesn't have anything to, uh, you know, uh, anything useful he can do. He can play maybe h6, rook e8, but doesn't help him much. It will simply improve our position by playing rook e1. We'll maybe uh, be ready for to play d4 eventually. We'll protect this pawn e4. And then uh, we can play even h3, uh, a4. We have a lot of useful moves. And black, on the other hand, he never can take on d5, then what he will do? It's so simple. Yeah. And, so the uh, the main point is that his pieces are very passive and he has no clear way. For example, if the pawn is on c5 instead of c7, then black maybe can go knight d4, maybe he has some other options. But with the pawn on c7, he has uh, no uh, clear, clear following up. So. Yes, uh, indeed. And his uh, queen side is uh, actually uh, quite um, overextended. And that's yeah, and like... also vulnerable to attacks. We can simply play a4. And you can see, for example, after h6, let's say a4, already we are threatening to take on b5 and take on a8. Yes. So he needs to go maybe rook b8, and then we'll have the control of the a file. So he has a lot of problems already. Yeah, probably something like uh, queen d7, uh, but... Uh, yes, something like queen d7, but then once again, we will play simply rook e1, maybe I like or even h3, just to wait a little bit to improve our pieces. And uh, for black, it's not simple how to continue. Black uh, runs out of moves. Yeah, this is the, the main point. Is 
And just yeah. want to mention something after Bishop E6, Knight C3. Actually, the main move that I considered in my uh, course, uh, it was the move Bishop G4 here, which is very strange. But the idea is that now we can play C3 because so you remember here after Bishop G4, we are playing the move C3 to control the D4 square. And now after Bishop E6, uh, he's losing a tempo, but uh, he simply wants to play Knight D4 and to use this uh, very unpleasant pin. So this makes some sense. And now uh, I think uh, we must go H3 already. I see uh, that Bishop. there is a question in the chat. Uh, yes. can, can I read it? Uh, which players should we study for in order to understand uh, the Rui Lopez uh, better? Anand, Kasparov uh, or someone else? Yeah, I have some suggestion what I was doing when I was a kid. Uh, my favorite uh, players for uh, Spain to learn the Rui Lopez was Karpov and Fischer because they had uh, brilliant games. And especially if you are still um, new to chess and you still need to improve a lot, I think these two players are absolutely the best in my opinion of uh, understanding the positions the structures they have wonderful games both of them they're just great okay uh, Karpov and fisher they have amazing uh, amazing games and very very instructive ones and one uh, more question uh, what happens after knight d4 but in which moment is important yeah because now uh, after uh, Okay, uh, bishop e6, knight c3. I don't uh, believe here knight d4 is an option. No, knight d4 is an option in some uh, future lines, but here immediately, for example, when the knight is already on c3, maybe he can go knight d4, but with the knight on b1, doesn't make. For example, here I think it's simply bad. We can take and we can even play c3 probably and just open the position. And we have a very nice pawn structure. I mean, it's. Uh, doesn't feel the great the great it's very good for black after take for example we take with the knight it seems to be very simple for white indeed uh, we just develop uh, normally and our pawn structure is simply a little bit better yeah uh, very very well uh so uh yeah, sorry for interrupting you yeah but it's I, okay it's i okay. wanted to make one a more important uh, clarification uh, I see that uh, the one other advantage of the move bishop d2 instead of a3 uh, in many lines when uh, black um, captures the bishop on b3, uh, it's useful that we have our pawn on a2 and we are able to take with the pawn and activate the rook. And this is not an option when uh, we have already uh, committed to a3. For example, the lines with bishop e6 will be quite different in this case, right? Yes, yes, this is, uh, this is right. Yeah, this is true. And this is true. This is also one of the, for example, after a3, this is actually a big line, castle, knight c3, and bishop e6. This is a very big line. It's one of the main lines. And now normally white takes, knight e2. Already it's a little bit different because we, we will not play with bishop d2. We'll just play knight e2, maybe knight g3. I think this is the main theory. I mean, there are a lot of games here. I see. Uh, so, yeah, there's some uh, advantages and some disadvantages probably about bishop d2, but uh, this is always in chess. So. Okay, uh, very well. Uh, so uh, let's uh, continue. Uh, I just wanted to show this line with bishop 6 knight c3, bishop g4, because it's very interesting. Now it's a bit concrete. We need to do something very concrete because knight d4 is coming. And this pin uh, is very unpleasant. So we must go h3. And now bishop h5 is a mistake, I think, because we will simply go g4. And I think uh, he cannot sacrifice really on, uh, on g4. Uh, actually, this is a very interesting trick. If he takes knight g4, we don't take immediately back. We just go bishop d5 first. Uh, very important. Queen d7, we take. And now we'll have this trick, knight takes to e5. It's a very, uh, very nice one. Very nice. And white is just winning. And if he plays bishop g6 here, then the bishop is extremely bad uh, on g6. And then uh, we'll simply continue with a4, attacking this pawn on b5. Eventually, after b4, knight d5. I think uh, in general this is very very bad because this bishop is just completely out of uh, out of the game. And h5 is never working. We will simply go g5 and doesn't change anything. Okay, a very nice uh, point. Uh, so h... and I just want to quickly show h3. Bishop f3 is the main move. So take my d4 here. Let's say he goes g6 first because he's not in hurry to take on b3. We go bishop e3, and we'll have this position. We already discussed something similar. 
that uh, Black has changed a lot of pieces and he's fine. But here is a little bit different because here already he lost some tempest, our queens on G3 instead of D1. And now we have some plans to go F4, maybe knight E2, F4. And uh, we have simple position. He has some weaknesses. This pawn is weak. And we want to open the F5 also. I think it's clear that white is a little bit better without any kind of risk uh, for white. Yeah, we're, uh, we can basically uh, play on both wings. Yes, yes, this is the point. And of course, he has some knight h5 idea. So that's why I think that knight e2 is important to prepare f4 in order to take with the knight on f4. So, okay, very uh, well. I think it's only slight advantage, but it's very pleasant uh, one. Okay, uh, very nice. Uh, so, uh, okay, bishop g4, we play h5. Uh, Page yeah, so after bishop e2, maybe we should move to castle. I think castle is the most uh, logical way here, of course, just to make castle. Uh, actually, this is what is very popular nowadays. Uh, bishop g4 is my main move when I was playing with black. This, this was my idea. But I see that uh, recently there are a lot of games with short castle. And uh, even on top level, there are some games already. Uh, Black simply wants to play with uh, h6, rook e8, bishop f8. This is what Magnus Carlsen did a couple, uh, couple of games. Because bishop g4 is more concrete, maybe leads to some complications. So we know that Magnus, he doesn't want to make uh, so big complications. And what he was doing, uh, I think, is very, very interesting. So that's why we should also discuss this in big uh, details. Okay. Uh, so after castle, we want to play h3 already just to prevent this bishop g4. Uh, and here black has a couple of ideas. I think h6 is the most popular nowadays with the idea to simply go rook e8 and bishop f8. Uh, there are some other options, of course. Uh, he can go bishop b7 is very normal move. Bishop b6 now, which is a little bit different, but also possible. Uh, he can go a5 even. I think a5 is very interesting as well which is not very uh, typical, but uh, I think it's possible. I believe uh, Fabiano Caruana had some games here, if I'm not mistaken, but definitely some top uh, guys, they played A5 also. So we should uh, see everything. For example, Bishop E6 is very similar to the previous one after Knight C3, let's say Bishop B3, A take B3, is very, very similar to the previous, uh, previous line. Uh, now the difference is he already castled, so maybe he can go d5 in one move. And here is very interesting uh, how white should continue, because this uh, structure in general shouldn't be so bad for black. He wants to open the position, and uh, it seems to be okay. If we take, for example, black uh, shouldn't have any problems. But here we have fantastic positional idea, which is to play bishop g5, trying to exchange this uh, bishop for that knight and then to place the knight on d5. Uh, after, let's say, d4, we simply want to take here, take knight d5. And this is uh, very unpleasant. For example, there were one game here where white um, simply after queen d6 played c3, trying to open the c file. Eventually, the queen will come to c2, maybe rook to c1. And uh, black has some problems thanks to this weakness here. This knight is very strong. His bishop is a little bit blocked in his own pawns. So white has uh, clear positional advantages here. That's obvious. Because of the knight, we know in close position is much stronger. In this knight in d5, it's uh, really stronger than the bishop on f6. Yeah, so white uh, com combines uh, his uh, white square strategy uh, with uh, with uh, playing against uh, black, black queen side weaknesses here. Yes, and of course, this rook is very pleasantly placed on the a5. It's simply uh, uh, playing perfectly. So uh, also he has some problems in the center now. He doesn't want to take here because this structure seems uh, not very nice. Eventually we can even play B4 maybe, going to B3. Uh, I mean, it's uh, just very passive for black. Indeed. So this is about Bishop 6 I don't think Bishop 6 is so uh, critical, but of course it's one of the, of the typical moves. So that's why we should, uh, we should know how to react after this. And another move very typical is bishop b7 here. I think this is uh, very similar to actually probably transposed to some sort of um, anti martial with h3 and d3 lines. So now we go rook e1 already because we need already to, to place the rook here just to protect the, the pawn eventually and just to wait also one more move for uh, what black will do. 
Uh, and here, Vlad has, uh, yeah, tell me. Uh, yeah, just one question because uh, it might be uh, important uh, for our viewers. Uh, can we also consider uh, the move um, rookie one uh, as a prof prophylaxis against uh, the, the advanced D5? Yes, of course, of course. This is uh, the main point, actually. Yes, of course. This is yeah. the main point. Rookie one, usually in uh, Rui Lopez, it's uh, one of the most uh, normal moves, and uh, the rook belongs to you one. So sooner or later, we need to go rookie one. And we just postpone it for some other advantages, but now we already can uh, permit ourselves to play rookie one. And what will happen if, uh, for example, now uh, Black uh, tries to go for some martial type of compensation with d5? I don't think here d5 it's uh, working. I'll just try to show you one line very quickly, which goes uh, here if we go, uh, let's say, uh, rook e1, yes. b5, bishop b3, castle, h3, bishop b7, d3. And now Black goes d5, but now you see the difference, the bishop is already on d2. For example, here the main line goes here, 95, 94, and bishop d2. So that means that simply we have tempo up, which uh, shouldn't yes. be uh, shouldn't be good for black. Indeed. And uh, this is the the point that now I don't think he can go for that because simply it's uh, it's just a, lo a losing of tempo, clear tempo. And in chess in general, it's um, not always, but in these concrete positions, it's very important. Yeah. I was thinking about something like after knight e5, knight takes e5, rook e5, bishop f6, uh, just to, uh, make, yeah. ma to make use of the move bishop d2. Actually, you are right. Yeah, probably we cannot take immediately on e5. I didn't, uh, to be honest, I don't know this, but uh, probably here, I think here maybe we can go knight c3. Knight c3 is the difference. Okay. I think this is the difference that now we go first knight c3. And if you take, I take, and then you cannot protect the pawn. This is the problem. Yeah. Yeah, you are right that knight e5 doesn't work because of bishop f6 if you take on b2. But after knight c3, uh, I attack the knight and then the pawn is still hanging on e5. Yeah, it's not clear uh, how black should continue here. Yeah, I think he's just losing the pawn problem. Yeah, yeah without any compensation. Yes. Okay, this was important clarification. Yeah, of course, of course. I never thought about d5 because it's simply not possible here, but probably because of that. Yeah. Yeah, okay, we are we are preventing d5, so uh, <laughs> important to check whether it... Uh, of course, works. of course. So here black has different plans. I think the most usual plan here for black is to go queen d7. The idea is to go knight d8, knight d6. This is very typical in uh, in Marshall, in anti Marshall. So queen d7, I think, is the main move. But of course, he has some other moves, let's say, like knight b8. It's a briar type of uh, position, no? To play knight b8, knight d7. Uh, I think uh, probably transposed to some other stuff, but a little bit different because we have the bishop on d2. I think here what I suggest is to go a3. Maybe we can go a4 as well, but already I think a3 is uh, better because the problem is after a4, knight d7, already he is kind of protecting this uh, pawn. Uh, for example, if you go knight a3, he can go c6 very easy and then eventually knight to c5. So this knight on a3 doesn't uh, belong already there. Uh, so that's why I think already we can play with a3, knight d7, and uh, knight to c3. This is, I think, uh, some sort of theory which is supposed to be better for white. For example, rook e8 is the typical move with the idea of bishop f8. He's not afraid of knight g5 because normally he goes back and then we need to retreat, retreat because he'll go h6 anyway. Yeah. So that's why he's going rook e8 instead of h6, just not to lose tempo. And uh, bishop a2. Bishop f8. Uh, this position I analyzed quite well. There is one game, I think, Van Forest against uh, Arjun, uh, which is very uh, popular Indian guys nowadays. Arjun uh, right? Uh, yes, but uh, I think it was played in a uh, long time ago, like 2019 or something. And here what uh, Van Forest played was brilliant. That's why I want to show. Uh, this is, of course, the suggestion of the computers. Uh, the move g4. It's not very usual move, but here it's very good because um, he has some intermediate problems. And for example, the game continued knight c5, knight g5, here take take, and now g5, queen g4. And white has very good positional advantage, now h4. You see that now this structure is very bad for, uh, for black because we have this bishop. Uh, we'll just push on the king side. Uh, maybe uh, we can play h5 next. Or maybe we can bring, bring the knight to e2, to g3. I mean, black is extremely passive and uh, 
this structure now it's not in black's favor also the bishop on f8 is extremely passive yes indeed so this g4 it's uh, just genius idea normally we don't play like this but here i think it uh, makes a lot of sense and uh, then, so, so g4, yeah after g4 uh yeah can be our uh, usual continuation it's possible to consider knight e2 knight uh, g3 and then g5 uh, Yes, yes, 92, 93 is very uh, possible now. Yes, of course. I think uh, Black has no good moves. He can't go h6 because it's just giving us some g5 ideas. Maybe he can go g6, but uh, you can simply go 92, 93, and then uh, we can continue with some g5 ideas. And before you continue, uh, can you uh, just briefly explain to some of our viewers the move Bishop A2, uh, why it was Yes, a yes. Uh, Bishop A2 is, uh, yeah, for me, close naturally, but actually it's not so simple. The idea is that we want to prevent uh, Knight C5 to be with Tempo. Yes. And uh, that's why we are going Bishop A2. This is a very typical move in Rui Lopez. Many times we want also to play before next, which is also very typical. And after some all oh, some ideas like knight d5 or everything we do, the bishop on a2 is better because it's not under attack. For example, knight c5 is not with tempo. For example, if he goes here, knight c5, now we can even think about knight g5, rook here, and then b4 even. And he needs to go back to b7, which is clearly in white's favor. Okay, so uh, remember, guys, two ideas behind uh, bishop a2. First of all, uh, knight c5 will not come with a tempo. And also, in many cases, we can play b4 uh, with the idea to either chase the black knight away or even gain space on the queen side and uh, follow up with a4 as well. Yes. So this is about the move knight b8. There are some other uh, options, but uh, let's move to uh, queen d7, which is the most popular way to play, most popular plan. So now I think uh, we go a3, and uh, this is what transposed to, I think, anti, uh, anti martial with h3 and d3 that we considered before. I just quickly will show the line. So it's here uh, with um, playing rook e1, b5, bishop b3, castle h3. But here, of course, black has the option to go d5 and also to go d6. I think d5 is the most critical. But if he goes d6, transposed to our line, now a3, queen d7, and bishop d2. This is uh, the last position. Uh, so here, basically, yeah, after castle h3, bishop b7, or q1, queen d7, we transpose to that line, a3, knight d8. And now the theory goes, the most popular theory goes after knight c3, knight c6. There are a lot of games here. And uh, black usually wants to go with c5 next, maybe rook f8, bishop f8. It's very critical position. Uh, but here what I want to show you, because we didn't play knight c3 yet, we started with bishop d2, we have this extra plan, extra option to go for c4, which is very interesting. The idea is to play knight c3 next. And uh, after bc4, of course, we'll take with the bishop always. Uh, so let's say he goes knight e6, we go knight c3. So the main idea is if he takes, this is always in white's favor, because uh, this bishop is very strong, and we'll play b4 next. Eventually, maybe the queen on b3, and this potentially can be very, very unpleasant uh, diagonal for black pieces. Uh, so I think uh, this structure is uh, kind of uh, very playable for white. Yes. And after uh, knight c3, c5 is the move that I consider. I think this is the best way, probably, trying to fight for this uh, black square here. So now we'll go knight uh, to d5. There's some other, uh, uh, for example, this was the game. Uh, Kuchin bet against Vitugov, he played rook b1, which is a bit awkward, but makes some sense. The idea is eventually to play b4. Uh, but the problem is black will not take on c4, so rook b1 is a little bit too slow. So that's why I suggest the move knight d5. And for example, uh, here bishop d8 is usual move. Uh, he can, of course, take immediately, but this is also uh, very similar to what we will see a little bit later. Uh, so let's say bishop d8, bishop c2, with the idea before. So now after the exchanges, we are reaching this position, take, take. Uh, and uh, now he has a choice to take with the e or with the c pawn. So uh, what do you think, for example, what do you think is the best here for black, just to, to see your opinion in this uh, situation? 
Okay, I'm I'm not um, I'm not playing uh, these positions with black, uh, for example. No, I know it's difficult. That's why I want to see yeah, yeah, also another yeah. opinion just to. But probably uh, just to obtain some kind of counterplay, I would have considered e takes d4 uh, yes. to have the idea of c4 coming. Uh, some yes, if uh, if black takes with the c pawn, I think the position is very passive. We'll go f4. This is very. Uh... Very good way. And now we want actually to play five next, just to completely block uh, this bishop. Uh, this bishop will be completely out of the game. Yes. And uh, if he takes here, then he has some problems with uh, this pawn on d6, the pawn on d4. Of course, our bishop is also not ideal, but uh, actually we have a very interesting plan, maybe to play queen d2 eventually, bishop d1, bishop g4. So uh, our bishop is definitely has some options compared to the other one, which is uh, absolutely passive there on b7. And, and uh, if you c takes d4 is quite uh, one sided, uh, that's why yes, of course. And if you take e d4, this is very critical. Black actually wants to play with f5, maybe next. So that's why here the best move is uh, g4. Fantastic idea just to prevent all kind of uh, uh, counterplay. And then eventually we can even go bishop f4, queen to d2, or f3. I think still it's a little bit more preferable for white uh, because c4 is not so easy after c4. Then black really cannot uh, follow with anything um, special. These pawns can be hanging as well. It's yeah. very complicated position, but uh, the engines are liking quite it. I think it's much easier to play with right here. We'll simply go bishop four. Maybe we'll bring the queen to f3, g3. We'll just attack this pawn on d6. And uh, definitely black has uh, to be careful. It's very complicated, but I think more for black. He needs to be very careful. Also, we will uh, play rook a to d1 and uh, the move. Yes, d8. of course. For example, bishop b6 here looks logical to protect the pawn. And then we go queen f3, queen to g3. He needs to protect this pawn on d6 all the time. And uh, it's not very obvious if he wants to play c3 or how he wants to play. Because after c3, we can also consider something like b4 maybe. And uh, it's complex position, I understand, but I think it's uh, a little bit in White's favor. Yes, uh, it makes sense. Okay. So, yeah, this was about this uh, Queen D7. I think this line is uh, very possible for Black, but because he still didn't play Bishop B7, maybe he has other choices. And uh, I don't think Bishop B7 is the most critical, but obviously it's one of the possible moves. So another option is a5 that I want to show you. It's a little bit uh, rare, but it's interesting. So now he's basically provoking a4 because we need to go a4. Uh, we can go a3, but black has a lot of space advantage now on the queen side. So I think it's better to, to already fix this pawn to play a4 before. And rook e1, I think it's critical, of course, to prevent d5 now. Once again, and now I think uh, we really prevent it because now we can take on e5. Yes, this no. is different because the, the knight is hanging on d5. So, seven maybe, and uh, it's a little bit different. Okay, so uh, after rook e1, the theory okay, there are a few games here, black plays. Oops. Uh, and now the move that I suggest is bishop e3. Just waiting for um, uh, just waiting for uh, Black to see what uh, what he'll do. Uh, he doesn't want to take on b3 because after cb uh, we can actually use the c file. We can play queen c2 next, knight d2, or c1. And I think this can be in White's favor. For example, after d5 we can go here, or c6 to protect the knight. Then bishop g5. I think it's important. H6. Change this bishop. And now we have clear positional advantages. Of course, we have this rare uh, pawn structure. Then we have a pair of knights against this bishop. We'll have the C file. This knight on C6 uh, cannot move. And uh, I think uh, black should be careful. Also, some queens ideas maybe are coming. So I think white is a little bit uh, better. We have some plans like knight f1, knight e3 to activate. So this is definitely a little bit uh, worse version for Yes, uh, just uh, one remark for our uh, less experienced um, spectators. Yes. Um, um, you can, uh, guys, uh, see uh, how often uh, in uh, all these positions, Black's uh, C6 knight uh, turns out to be uh, really misplaced. 
Yeah, that's correct. So that's why many times he wants to play knight a5, c5, or knight b8, knight bd7. But here with the bishop on d2, it was a little bit difficult. He cannot really play knight a5. So here in that position, uh, after bishop e3, he, he wants to play with d5. Uh, that's obvious. But he cannot do it immediately because of knight g5. So uh, that's why I think the best move is now to go h6 to prevent this knight g5 and then to play d5. And now let's say uh, if we go knight d2, d5, this is already more or less fine for black. After take, knight d5. It's still very complex. This was actually the game Grandelius Rager. And black managed to equalize more or less. Uh, but after h6, I want to suggest already to, to uh, play differently, to exchange on e6 and to play this structure now. Uh, because already we played bishop p3. He lost tempo to play h6. This is in white's favor. And now we go c3, d5, knight d2. We just want to develop. Uh, the idea is that he has very nice, uh, it looks structure, but sometimes these pawns on e5 and e6, they can be attacked, for example, this knight needs to protect the pawn all the time on e5. And if he goes d4 here, the point is, of course, we can bishop e4. And this is clearly in white's favor because we have these squares. Uh, rook c1 is coming. I mean, once again, this knight on c6 is uh, misplayed. And after knight d2, he doesn't really want also to exchange because the structure is still very bad. Our knight will land sooner or later on c4, and this will be just uh, very important. And here after knight d2, I think the best move is bishop d6, pre uh, preparing d4 maybe. Uh, but now we will go queen c2. And uh, eventually we also want to push maybe d4 to change the pawn structure. And I think uh, white keeps some small pressure. Uh, black needs always to be careful with these pawns uh, on e6 and e5. And uh, it's not so simple. I think it's a little bit more unpleasant for uh, to play with black pieces here. Yes, uh, his uh, central pawns uh, look uh, good, uh, but uh, they're not uh, mobile at all. And uh, compared uh, to some uh, classical Italian wines, uh, Black doesn't have uh, his usual play along the F file in this position. Of course, one remark, for example, if the pawn is on C5, once again, I think Black is uh, also already better, I think, if the pawn is on C5. But with the pawn on C7, it's a completely different story. We just want to push the four, maybe the rook to D1 and... Uh, Black doesn't have, uh, he cannot attack us on the king side because he has no pieces there. Probably he needs to go queen d7, rook e8 or something, but uh, I think white is slightly better. Yeah, black just, slightly uh, more comfortable, let's right. say, like this. I'm not sure if it's objectively so much better, but it's uh, very easy to play. And in the practical game, it's uh, not so easy to play with black. Rather passive, actually. He should uh, yes. see it uh, in this position. He has no active options. Uh, so now let's move to this Carlsen choice after h3. He was playing h6. He just wants to play rook e8, bishop f8, and the bench. Six with someone to take with the pawn. Actually, one very interesting thing I want everybody that I noticed something very interesting that um, uh, Magnus Carlsen, when he plays positions like Italian or Spanish, Rui Lopez. He never uh, goes for this structure, uh, bishop 6 and take with a pawn. He always wants to take with a rook. And actually, I have explanation for that. Because um, uh, when we take with a pawn, is, uh, in general, these positions are good for black. But they're more concrete. Uh, normally, in long term, uh, it be worse. But uh, eventually, he will push d5. He has a lot of concrete ideas. And compared to that, if you go rook eight, bishop f8, and then you take with a rook on e6, Black is a little bit worse, but uh, in the long term, uh, if he managed to change some pieces, I think his structure in general is more healthy. And uh, in general, Black has good structure. So he prefers structure is uh, good. So he knows that if he plays the normal moves, eventually he will equalize. And on the other hand, if you take, if you play the structure with uh, take with the pawn on e6, then black needs to play very concrete because otherwise uh, eventually he'll end up in some bad uh, pawn structure position. Okay, very well. Very interesting. So, uh, yeah, after h3, h6, uh, rook e1 once again, rook e8. Uh, so this is uh, the typical way. He wants to play bishop f8. So now we want to play already with a4. Of course, we can go a3. This is... Uh, I think the main move, there are many games, bishop f8, knight's three. Now black goes to rook b8. 
And uh, the idea of rook b8 is just to wait uh, for knight d5, and then he wants to take and to play knight d7, knight to g6. I think there are some games in this position already. Knight g6, bishop comes to e6. White will probably go b4, but uh, more or less this is considered to be okay for black because his uh, his structure now is not so uh, not so bad. Uh, so that's why what I want to suggest a little bit more concrete. I want to go a4 now, just to use this. Um, this a file. So now he has a big choice to play with b4 or to give up uh, this uh, file and to play rook b8. Uh, for, he can also play bishop b7, I think it's also possible. The only not good move, I think, bishop b7, because bishop b7, we already discussed this after knight a3, he has a lot of problems with, uh, with this pawn. Uh, so after a4, if he goes, for example, bishop b7 is very passive, but it's a possible uh, move. He wants to keep uh, the bishop on this diagonal just to protect this pawn eventually on b5. So now the, the best thing a white can do is to exchange knight c3 to attack the pawn. Let's say uh, he exchanges everything, queen b8. Now we have this idea to go queen a2. We can use this uh, battery here with the bishop and the queen to attack uh, on f7. And I think white is a little bit better because the rook will come to a1, we'll have the control on the a file. For example, after something like knight d8, we can exchange uh, the knights. We can go back here, rook a1. It's not a big deal, but it's a little bit better because we control the a file, we'll go bishop b3 next. And uh, black is still very passive. He needs to, uh, to defend the whole game. It's not so simple. Yeah, this is a very unpleasant uh, nagging uh, pressure. Yes, and uh, after a4, another option is rook b8, which is very similar. We do the same, we take, we go knight here, bishop f8, knight d5. This is similar to the, to the previous line with the pawn on a3, but now we have the control of the a5, which is very important. Take, take, knight e7 is very similar. But what we will do now is rook e7. Uh, immediately we will try to attack uh, the pawn on c7. We want to play bishop a5, maybe the queen on a1, maybe queen a5 next. And definitely still white is keeping some pressure. So uh, that's why after a4, I think now it makes sense for black to close the position. Uh, first of all, uh, he's closing this rook. And also our bishop now is a bit awkward. This knight on b1 is passive, so b4 makes a lot of sense. Uh, I think it's very good to start with a5, just to fix uh, this pawn on b4. Also, eventually we will have this bishop a4 idea maybe one day. So here after a5, rook b8 is a typical move. Uh, just to be ready for c3, we go bishop b3. So now I want to mention something that is very important. If black goes d5 immediately, uh, this structure now is different because we saw a very similar position, but uh, instead of uh, white played a5, black played a5. And this is actually very, very different because now we have some extra options to go knight c4, to attack maybe this knight by bishop a4. So this gives white uh, more uh, options. And this yeah, structure, so if it takes... Structure, the pawn on b4 uh, creates a lot of damage for black. Yes, yes. And if uh, black uh, managed to play a5 instead of white playing a4, a5, then it's a different story. But here it's uh, in white's favor. And for example, if he exchanged the bishop, this is not good for him. Because our bishop is extremely strong now from b3. And uh, we just want to focus on attacking this pawn on f7. We can play rook f1, maybe even queen e1, queen g3. And uh, it's uh, simply very, very unpleasant. Yeah, indeed, uh, very difficult position for black. Yes, so that's why d5 is not so... Uh, I mean, it's possible, but it's not uh, so great. So here maybe he can wait for uh, bishop f8. He can play knight e2, bishop e6. And now we don't want to exchange anymore because he take with the rook. Now we want to win some tempo to go bishop a4. He needs to go back with the bishop and then c3. So now our plan is very simple to go queen c2, d4 maybe next. And I think white still keeps some uh, better chances because once again uh, for black it's not so simple what to how to play. Uh, probably he needs to play something like queen c8, queen b7 is very typical in this type of the positions, but uh, I think still white is a little bit uh, preferable here. Yeah, pro probably we can also demonstrate what will happen if uh, black uh, plays usual moves like uh, knight e7, knight g6, we, we taking calls on c3 or without? 
Yeah, that, I think taking C3 just yeah, helping quite because this yes. B5 only white can use it. Yeah, I agree. No, so 97, 9, G6, uh, let's see. Yes, 97 is possible, but now we are ready to push even D4. I think we can simply exchange maybe, let's say, Queen D7. We can go something like D4. And uh, we simply have very nicely uh, uh, center, let's say, Knight G6. We can even go Queen C2. And uh, usually this uh, center is uh, giving us more space. So that means that we have uh, he has some weaknesses here. Our knight uh, eventually can land to c4. So I think white has simply a little bit better pawn structure, and that's why we are a little bit better. It's Let not a big deal, of course, but black is still very passive. It's still not clear how to continue. And probably uh, this uh, typical uh, advanced d5 will be met with uh, taking uh, twice on e5, followed by f4 and d5, e5, e5. Yes, I'm in this particular situation, okay. I think also maybe bishop d4 but uh normally i say f4 and t5 is just uh, giving quite very good uh, advantage yeah, typical yes. way of uh, fighting against uh, d5. Well, this is very standard position for example with the pawn on a2 and the black pawn on b5 it's very standard but now with the pawn on a5 it's clearly in white's favor because we are fixing these pawns and uh, these are only weaknesses for black in long-term weaknesses so yes uh, this is this gives white a little bit better uh, chances Okay, uh, it makes perfect sense. Uh, okay, so this was about this plan with uh, h6. Uh, I think uh, playing with castle and h6 is very possible, uh, but it's a little bit passive and uh, it's not for everybody. I think uh, black needs to defend the whole time. So uh, that's why, for example, me, myself, I prefer after bishop d2 to play bishop g4 because it's a little bit more aggressive uh, way to continue. Okay. Uh, so uh, I believe uh, we have uh, managed uh, to cover uh, the most important moments in this uh, main line. Yes, I think so. I think so. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, I have uh, one more question. Um, indeed, uh, this uh, wine uh, is not uh, that uh, theoretical uh, because uh, we have seen how important it is to know the typical pawn structure, all the nuances uh, of the position, the typical maneuvers, uh, and so on and so on. Uh, but in general, uh, in this Rui Lopez uh, database, in some of the forced lines, uh, you uh, you give uh, a lot of uh, long theoretical lines. Uh, how should uh, our uh, readers uh, uh, try to remember them uh, in a more practical way. Uh, how do you suggest that they work with your databases? I always uh, suggest uh, to, to work on actual chessboard, just to uh, see all these lines uh, uh, without pressure, without time limit, just to watch on the board, to try to understand better the positions. And of course, uh, if you have uh, an option to play with uh, somebody who is a similar level to yours, just to try to play some training games. This is also a very good way to understand uh, positions. And uh, I don't think it's uh, possible to remember everything. I don't remember everything when I play my games. But we remember the structures, the positions. And this is very important. Important the understanding of the position. Because there are some... Uh, 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 variations, for example, like night door for some very uh, great times where every move is just very important, otherwise you just lose the game. It doesn't matter if you understand or not. Here is not the case, here is different. Uh, of course, it's better to, if you understand, if you understand better the positions, you can also remember better the lines because you know uh, when uh, to do what, for example, when he plays with bishop 6 how to react, when he plays with bishop 7 how to react. So this is the main point to understand better the positions. And if you remember uh, more, it's better. But if you don't, you just try to remember the whole uh, ideas and... Uh, yes. Uh, okay, uh, now uh, one, one more uh, question, which is a kind of um, related uh, to studying opening variations. Uh, how uh, how do you uh, use uh, computers uh, in your uh, preparation? Do you, uh, do you try to analyze uh, some uh, complex opening positions on your own without uh, the computer on on the chessboard, and then compare your analysis with uh, the suggestion of the engine, or uh, you uh, work directly with uh, strong engines? Uh, 
Yeah, that's a good, uh, good question. Actually, when, um, okay, when I was a kid, I uh, didn't have a computer for years. When I was like 14, 15, it was my first computer. So I was uh, analyzing a lot on uh, actual chessboard. Uh, but nowadays, of course, um, I just, uh, for example, when I have already some uh, line analyzed very board just to understand better the positions and uh, many times when I had then I uh, figure out some interesting ideas and I'm checking with the computer and usually it's very helping uh, for your memory but uh, already the computers are so so strong that really we cannot uh, we cannot do much for example I remember in the years 2005-2006 when I was working with Topao for example the engine which the computers uh, were not suggesting. For example, the very famous uh, in the Slav defense, this knight takes f7, uh, which I uh, found it myself giving minus two for, uh, for black. So I was just trying, and then at that point, minus two, not such a big deal. I mean, you could uh, you could uh, just play there. And uh, actually, nowadays, the computer I made uh, the same position just to see already the computers are suggesting is zero, zero. So, It, it, it means that uh, at that time we put uh, ideas that the computer were not, were not showing, uh, but nowadays they're so strong that uh, really it happens that uh, uh, he's giving some advantage, but it's not true. I mean, just very, very rarely. So it doesn't make sense to uh, really analyze uh, on the board. I think it makes more sense to already watch your analysis just to understand better. Because I remember many times, for example, when I play my games, I know the line. The game, I try to say, to, to understand what is going on. For example, many times I see some move for my opponent that I don't uh, have it in my lines. And I'm like, oh, this move is very logical. And then you start thinking and you figure out why it's not working. But many times you don't check every move because the computer starts the moves and many times it happened to me when i uh, i'm on the board i just see okay but uh, why not this move it's uh, very logical no? yeah uh, very very often uh, very often we uh, see the, the the evaluation of the computer and uh, we play uh, by the standards of the computer tr uh, trusting uh, this evaluation no, so uh, I, I, i think that uh, Uh, you have probably some uh, problem with the internet connection because uh, uh, there are some interruptions in your voice. Is it okay now? I think now it's better. Yeah, I think something might happen. Yeah, now I think it's okay. Now, now it's okay. Yeah, the, I just wanted to, to point out uh, that uh, very, very often uh, we, uh, when we analyze the position with the computer, we see the evaluation, and uh, when uh, and then it turns out that it's very difficult uh, to play the position over the board because uh, the computers are improving much faster than the human thinking, and uh, we cannot just. Uh -huh. keep Yeah, this is actually one point that I want to, to say. This is, uh, uh, it's not only me, I think uh, all the top guys that I know, because I worked with many strong players, and I know how they think actually many times nowadays, uh, because the computers are very strong, uh, when we are looking for some opening ideas, uh, we are trying to uh, not, because it's very difficult to surprise your opponent. If uh, you play against, I don't know, Caruana or Giri or somebody like this, I mean, they know everything. So the idea is basically to, to find some position where it's not so simple to play during the board. And uh, maybe it's equal or uh, it's not so clear, but uh, if it's new, if uh, it's like not the first suggestion, maybe the fifth suggestion of the, the suggestion of the computer, but still the positions are uh, not very easy to play. This is a very interesting idea already. So basically many times we are trying just to find something that uh, it seems that uh, our opponent will not um, uh, see it in big details because it's not, I mean, there are many other moves, so he cannot check everything. And also just 
to try to uh, use this on the board just to make him play. And some positions are not so simple to play, even if you are a very top uh, player. Uh, yeah, that's why uh, chess uh, will be uh, always alive because our uh, the, the practical strength of the humans, uh, even the best ones of them, is far away from the, the strength of the uh, top computers. Uh, so yeah, of course, it's very only Magnus is close. Only Magnus is close. Yeah, the others are very very close. Uh, all these evaluations in practice. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, now I see one question. Uh, do you have any tips uh, to get uh, better at planning in the middle game? So this is a question from YouTube. Yeah, I think uh, this is uh, very important because uh, chess is not only opening, it's middle game, end game is very important. I think in middle game, uh, there are a lot of uh, books. I think this is the best way to simply um, check a lot of books, a lot of games of uh, strong players. For example, let's say you are playing this type of positions, uh, Spanish uh, Rui Lopez, then uh, you catch the games of, uh, once again, I will repeat, uh, Bobby Fischer or Anatoly uh, Karpov, and you just check their games on the board without computer, and this is how you actually improve your middle game strength as well, because you know a lot of uh, ideas that they're, they're repeating, they're playing the same uh, way many times, and uh, you understand finally why they're doing these things. But this uh, can happen only if you uh, uh, watch the, on the board, because if you watch with the engines, it's very difficult. I think to understand middle games, you really need to watch on the board. There are very good uh, books about uh, middle games. Uh, for example, one I remember the books of uh, Sokol, for me, they helped me a lot also. Uh, he has a lot of uh, books of uh, how to improve your middle game. And there are many, many others that you can uh, check. And this is the way you should improve your middle game uh, strength. So great. And two more questions from YouTube. Uh, how much uh, you should trust computers in this wine? Should, should you just believe it uh, or think practically like computer says D3, but, but practically it is good? Uh, OK, I didn't get the idea, but uh, uh, okay, uh, let's summarize how you should, uh, to, to what an extent uh, you can trust the computer evaluations in this line with Bishop D2. Yeah, I think uh, in every line we can um, we can uh, trust them. But the point is that many times because the game of chess is, um, let's say, equal and many times it's giving just some um, like zero, 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 ten, which means nothing in chess, uh, chess, uh, World, I mean, okay, for them it's uh, something, but for me, when I go to the game, okay, you know, it's 0 10, but uh, you need to make moves. So, what I want to say is that uh, you should trust them, but of course, you should trust also your own intuition and uh, uh, based on um, the knowledge you know about the position. And uh, for me, it's, I mean, if you're a strong player, it's much more easy to judge these things. So, that's why you need to improve your um, general chess strength and then everything is coming together because it's simply uh, this is the way how it goes of course of course and uh, okay one more question what is your next project for modern chess i think we can disclose it yes uh so um uh, so now ivan is um, uh, is uh, writing uh, a database yes. uh, about the uh, Sicilian defense. Open team. Sicilian for white. Um, for white. He will start with uh, uh, the variations with d6 on the second move. So neither. Yes, which means, yeah, I will cover uh, everything with d6, so which means uh, Dragon, Scheveningen, Neidorf is the main, and classical Sicilian, uh, and some rare options as well. Uh, this is the first part, and uh, it will be very, uh, very useful, I think, because there are so many, so many lines there, and uh, very interesting options for black as well. All this uh, Nidorf or classical Sicilian. I already made a very good course about classical Sicilian, so uh, but this will be like uh, a little bit improved version because it will be for white. So um, I think uh, it will be very interesting. So yeah, so uh, the, the, this uh, the, uh, Sicilian open Sicilian uh, project will consist of uh, uh, of several databases, three databases in which uh, Chiparinov will provide a full repertoire for for white in open Sicilian. 
Also, uh, in the next days, uh, in the coming uh, days, we are going to publish uh, one follow-up of the Ketawan series about uh, that uh, Ivan wrote, uh, which uh, refers to the move order uh, D4, Knight F6, C4. If you want, we can uh, make on this move. Yeah, yeah, it will be with uh, D4. D4, Knight F6, F6. D4, E6, G3. G3, yeah. yeah. So you can, uh, this will be very useful for, for Catalan players because you practically avoid the uh, Queen's Indian defense. But yeah, and here uh, you see Bishop before move and also Benoni to be the best, uh, the biggest part because Benoni is very uh, popular here in this move order. So uh, yeah, I'll cover all this, uh, all this stuff. Yeah, practically this database is ready. Uh, we are currently editing it and uh, it will be published very soon. So uh, stay tuned. Uh, there will be a lot of uh, new uh, interesting things uh, coming from uh, Ivan. Uh, uh, let me remind you that uh, now uh, there is a special sale, 50% uh, uh, discount on all uh, databases by uh, Ivan Ciperinov. So uh, if you're interested in something, uh, now is the moment uh, to uh, grab the chance and improve your opening. Okay, Ivan, uh, I see that uh, probably there are no uh, more questions. Uh, mm -hmm. It was a very instructive uh, session. Uh, you have explained uh, really interesting ideas in uh, Will Lopez. Uh, you managed to improve uh, our general understanding of this opening. Uh, thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you a lot. And uh, I hope uh, the viewers could uh, understand a little bit better these uh, positions. But really, I suggest this course because it's uh, it's very very useful. The whole uh, the whole course about understanding of the whole Rui Lopez um, uh, opening. Yeah, and even guys, if even if you don't play uh, Rui Lopez, uh, let's say you play Italian or something else. Uh, uh, actually, this course will be useful again because Rui Lopez uh, is uh, the cornerstone of uh, your chess understanding. This, uh, all these types of position will help you understand chess better. Yeah, that is uh, that is clear. Yeah. Very uh, good point. Have you ever been scared of uh, white playing? Chess and uh, while playing chess, and if uh, you know some tips to stop, be scared. Scared? <laughs> okay, uh, no, I never been scared, but uh, this is, I think, um, I mean, it's a big uh, problem for many chess players. But uh, in general, all top uh, level players, they're not scared of uh, for losing a game or something. I never been uh, scared of losing a game. I think this is uh, some psychological problem that uh, may, I mean, I know a lot of guys who has uh, this. Uh, and uh, I think it's very important for an early age to be prevented. For example, I will give you my tip of what I was doing when I was a kid. I had some um, coaches and they uh, gave me some very good uh, advices that uh, I, I had this rule that I never uh, offered draw and I never accepted draw when I was like 10, 11 years old. So I knew that I cannot uh, offer a draw, I cannot accept. So the, the point is that I just need to play. And if, if you, when you know this, uh, you don't have to think about uh, being scared because you just need to play. So for me, this was very helpful and uh, I never uh, I never offered, I never accepted. And nowadays when I'm uh, already older, I can of course sometimes maybe offer or accept, but uh, already I don't have this fear of uh, losing, I mean, uh, of making draws. I just uh, play and this was all my life like this. So uh, this is very important for kids. If you are already older, I think if you had this problem, it's a little bit more difficult maybe. But always this is the suggestion, just to enjoy chess and uh, to never accept, never offer. Just you know that this is your rule and uh, you just play. If you have to play, then you should play. So... You cannot be scared of playing. Yeah, uh, at the 2200 FIDE, my level, should you play main wines or play side side wines uh, in the Wii Wapis? I think uh, in general, uh, uh, we already spoke about this, that uh, to improve your chess in general, I think it's better, in my opinion, to play uh, the main lines first. And then uh, when you're already very strong, you can... Um, 
you know, adjust a little bit. But I think it's uh, in general it's good to study all these classical uh, variations like Rui Lopez, like um, I don't know, Catalan depends if you are D4 or E4 player, of course. But I think it's uh, better to start with uh, Rui Lopez and then uh, eventually you can, uh, of course, switch to something else. But Rui Lopez is uh, how uh, Gregor said, is the initial of all these uh, Italians and all these structures. So Rui Lopez is like uh, one of the most popular lines in chess and it's very typical bone structure that all of us need to need to know. Yeah, so I suggest to start playing Rui Lopez and then eventually uh, you can switch to something else. And let me add something uh, concerning the main ones. If you, for example, you are if you are a D4 player, you can very well play uh, move uh, openings like uh, Trompovsky, Wandon, or uh, different uh, rare lines. And uh, these variations are not uh, so bad uh, if uh, you start analyzing with uh, strong engines. So uh, basically you get uh, playable with equal positions, but what is the problem? The problem is that uh, if you start playing only such openings, when uh, you're a player who wants to develop, you will not get understanding of the classical uh, type, uh, classical structures. And uh, this will hinder your future uh, chess development. And I think this was the point. Uh... Yeah, thank you, Gregor. This is what I wanted actually to say. This is what, this was my point. And I think this is very, very important. This is very, very important. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you once again, Ivan. You see, there were thank many you. questions. Uh, oh, I'm uh, glad. I'm glad. Thank you. I'm, thank you. I'm sure that in our next uh, stream, uh, uh, we will uh, solve all the technical issues in advance. But uh, this was the first time. So uh, yeah. please uh, accept our apologies. Uh, but uh, in, in any case, I think that it was very useful for everyone. Thank you, Ivan, and I hope that uh, we will uh, keep doing uh, such streams. Of course, of course. Thank you to you, and uh, yeah, I hope to see you soon, everybody, in some another stream. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. All the best. All the best. Thank you. In, in any case, I think that it